That was Side and uh, Karis once more. Uh, we're taking a look at the eye, and as they say, every little helps. This is a Tesco boss who sold 50,000 shares just, uh, what, a week before they plummeted on the stock exchange? Yeah. Um, it does. I mean, it, it was a small percentage of his shareholding, um, and it was not in the close period, but it does suggest, I mean, it's extraordinarily bad PR. It just suggests that even he uh, doesn't have any faith in his own company. And at a time where, you know, Tesco, this is one of the first times that, that Tesco have been um, in this position. I think it is the first time. Um, that it does seem a, a very strange decision to make because it will call into question what price sensitive information is, the definition yes. that Tesco's internal compliance department have given to it and whether they were right. And it just seems extraordinary to want to expose yourself to this. Of course people were going to have a look at who's been buying or selling shares at this particular point. And particularly those small shareholders who've got it in their pension funds or have bought shares in what is one of the blue chip companies mm. to discover this and are now, what, 17% down on their deal, thinking, well, perhaps if we'd had prior information, we'd have gone, I'd like to have, have bailed out as well. Well, this is it. I mean, he, it, Tesco is saying that he didn't have access to any of the big price-sensitive yeah. information, or they say any price-sensitive information, but of course he had daily sales figures, and he will have been party to some conversations. And it's just, you know, that's not necessarily calling into question the legality, but there's a bit more to it than that. And yeah. It just seems an, an odd decision to make. Uh, now, I think we've also got a story about eggs uh, in the eye, which I'm just going to move up, uh, which is illegal battery eggs entering the food chain despite EU ban. Let me just uh, enlarge that slightly and move it there. Uh, in fact, let me just move that up a touch, if I can. So that is, uh, there we go, Martin Hickman, Consumer Affairs Correspondent. Uh, so this is a black market story, is it? Well, it's not exactly a black market story. What it is is that in the late 90s, the EU voted for a ban on eggs from battery hens. Yes. And countries across the EU were given actually effectively 10, 12 years to put this ban in place. Britain worked very hard. The farmer, many, most farmers in Britain worked hard to get rid of battery uh, uh, hens. And actually, I think they spent about £400,000 across, you know, across the, farm, the agricultural sector. What's interesting is many countries are not going to be ready for, well, weren't ready for this ban. So therefore, there are countries where there are these illegal battery farm eggs, and some of them, even though there's a ban, there's supposed to be a ban, will actually the EU first of all said, oh, there's not going to be a problem. Don't worry, we'll sort this out. And then they realised there's going to be a problem, and they said, okay, what we'll do is those countries can continue to sell their eggs internally, but they can't trade across the borders. Yeah, very well, difficult to police. Well, one exactly, would and think, also you know. when you've got pro it gets into processed food you're going to have food in, coming into Britain yeah. that contains these illegal yeah. eggs. Right, on to the plastic surgery story, still going. There's the Times uh, coverage on it. And uh, this is the group, the private group, refusing to pay for mm. the implants being removed. Yes. I think, um, I, th I think they're probably waiting to see whether there's going to be <coughs> a case of actual harm, which there hasn't been yet, because then it's going to be quite a complex... Uh, litigation, uh, if there is a case of harm that comes through, that will go through back to see what were the insurable risks, mm. what were the representations. Um, but what's interesting about it is is really that um, it's it's a, definitely a case against the privatisation of the NHS uh, because it shows just how vulnerable these small companies, which aren't, are, you know, are, and when they, t well, it's not that small, actually, Harley Medical Group's massive. Although I think I'm right in saying in France, it's both the health service and the private um, companies have actually agreed to take these implants out. Yes. It's just, they, they said, you know, no argument will do it. So that's what's raising question marks here in Britain. Why aren't we doing the same here? Yes. The interesting thing is what uh, Harley Medical is saying was that they didn't know they were selling uh, or putting in faulty products because that had actually been approved by the relevant authority in health. You know. Is ignorance a defence in uh, law? Well, 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 I'm, I'm not a legal expert, but what they're saying, they're saying they were misled into thinking they were selling perfectly acceptable products. I'm not trying to stand up for them, no. but I kind of understand yeah. what, what And of course saying. it's left all these poor people with a breast implant still scratching their heads thinking, where... Uh, and where the lawyers will make a fortune. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, thank you very much indeed for your selection, and we'll see you again soon. Uh, but we're just going to tell you what the weather's up to because we've got quite a bit tonight. Tonight, we'll see some strong Arabica coffee.